you've been watching, you know that Robach and I were on assignment uh, for the past week and a half, uh, you could argue, of course, covering uh, everything going on with Queen Elizabeth all the, um, the morning period for her and the funeral as well. It was on Monday and one person at uh, that funeral was a woman who also found herself with the title of Queen at a pretty young age. Yes, Queen Rania of Jordan, along with her husband, King Abdullah, honored the Queen in London and have now traveled here to New York for the UN General Assembly and other global events held this week here in this city. And we have the honor and the pleasure to have Her Majesty, Queen Rania Al Abdullah of Jordan for a network exclusive interview. Your Majesty, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. It's such a pleasure to be back and to be having these face to face interviews again. It certainly is. I, I joked with you that we could all be jet lagged together as I we, know, as we, I as know. we uh, go through this interview. But I do want to talk about the Queen. Uh, I know you were able to be there at her funeral, but you've called the Queen a partner for Jordan and a dear family friend. What made Queen Elizabeth II special to you? She really meant a lot to all of us. You know, she was a pillar of strength and stability. And when you look at her today, you see that she, there's a lot that political leaders can actually learn from her today. Mm. You know, she always remained above the fray, above division, above politics. You know, even in the fractious times, she never took sides. She never added to the rift. She was always, through her constancy and her commitment, was always a source of comfort. And so she really, for me, she was also a role model. She, she taught the world what it means to be queen. And what was really special, and I'm sure you guys felt that too, is being in London, even though it was a very sad time, it was also a very reassuring time because you felt that not only was she a unifying force for her people in her lifetime, but she brought everyone together in her passing. I have never sensed that kind of sense of oneness, uh, togetherness, sense of community among all those British people who were out there you know, waiting for hours to, to, to see her and to pay their respects. No one asked them to do that. They did that because they loved her, because they wanted to say thank you. And in these divisive times that we live in, that was incredibly reassuring. You said this world leaders can learn something from her. What would you like for world leaders in these times to learn from Queen Elizabeth? Well, when you look at, when you look at her um, reign over 70 years, she never took her eye off the ball. She was always focused on serving her people. She made a promise to them to be there for them, and she was there for them in good times and in bad, always a source of stability and strength and comfort. And the, nowadays, when you look at leaders, sometimes they're always focusing on the short term rather than the long term, on building their brand rather than, you know, making progress for the people. And we see a lot of, you know, populist re rhetoric. So. Maybe a lot of times it's about popular popularity rather than principle. She was steadfast in keeping to her principles and her values and never based her decisions on what would make her more popular in any given day. And I think there's something to be said about that, about that kind of consistency and you know, just always remaining close to the things that you believe in. And, and it should be pointed out, you were just 28 yourself when yes. you became queen and I'm curious uh, you had someone you mentioned she was a role model Queen Elizabeth II to look up to did she ever offer you any advice did you ever seek any advice from her yes yes and I, and, and I was saying earlier that she you know she's so humble that she wouldn't expect you know you to ask for her advice but if you ask for it she's very generous with mm -hmm. it and and you know w when I first met her I was still new to the job and and she you know she told me the importance of always being there, uh, the sense of d sense of duty and discipline is so important. Paying attention to detail, you know, things don't just happen uh, because they do. You have to be on top of things, and and she was just always very, very kind in, in her, and always offered a guiding hand in general. Uh, look, given everything from the pandemic to the war in Ukraine um, to all kinds of issues, um, you said misinformation oftentimes is one of the biggest enemies out there. Um, what do you mean by that, by that and who, how can we fight that misinformation and who is perpetuating it? Right. Well, you know, I think all of us on a daily basis are bombarded by so much uh, information and news and, and, you know, changes happening at such a dizzying uh, pace. And I think in the, in, the, in, the, in the fog of this constant upheaval and information overload, we've all become susceptible and vulnerable to a communication landscape that really rewards outrage over honesty. Mm. Um, and that's what I think, why I think misinformation is probably the most dangerous threat to our world today. Because we have a lot of complicated challenges that we need to face. Like you said, pandemic, climate change, all, all these issues. And the goal of misinformation isn't just to misinform us. I think it is to influence our uh, thoughts and our actions 
to the benefit and service of somebody else's political agenda. So the onus is on us to be very vigilant and to go that extra fact-checking mile before we adopt something as, tr as truth. And it, this mi misinformation has been so divisive. And you see it not just here in the United States, all over the world, how people are starting to divide into tribes. And I find that very worrying uh, and, and incredibly dangerous because when you're in a tribe, you're, you're just huddled together and, and just very fearful of the other. And this politics of fear is very dangerous and, and, and very divisive for the entire world. And Your Majesty, I know that you and your husband, we mentioned, are here for the UN General Assembly. And one of the big topics, one of the big issues, of course, is the war in Ukraine. And I know uh, an issue near and dear to your heart is refugees. And it's yes. something you face in your own country. What should be a better plan? What would you like to see world leaders come together to do to address this growing and constant problem around the world? Right. It's been reassuring to see how many countries in Europe came together and you know, extended an open, uh, open arms and open policies to Ukrainian refugees. The, the response was swift and sincere, as it should be, to any refugee fleeing any crisis. But there was a disparity in the tone, urgency, and generosity extended to uh, Ukrainian refugees as compared to refugees fleeing other devastation, say from Syria or South Sudan or, or, or Myanmar. You know, there was one European country who earlier this year admitted uh, upwards of half a million Ukrainian refugees. In the past years, they had expelled tens of thousands of refugees from other countries. So I was saying earlier, you can't ration humanity or apply it selectively. And so I think the response to uh, the Ukraine crisis set a gold standard. It showed us that the world is capable uh, of mounting a truly humanitarian global response if the political will is there. And the political will should be there. And we can't lose sight of the suffering and the plight of people in other parts of the world. Well, as you continue to lend your voice to a number of issues, you keep a busy schedule, I think you call it's a job, a responsibility you have, and your family is expanding. You, are you, yes. you have this right? You got two weddings you're planning next I year? I have two weddings right? next year. <laughs> okay. You know, I'm still, I still can't believe it. My, my daughter was making fun of me the other day. She's like, Mom, whenever you're introducing me with other people, you're always like, she's getting married next year. And I think I have to keep sounding it so I can believe it because... And I told them, you guys, I've been like begging you guys to get married for years, and then you suddenly <laughs> decide to do it within three months or four months of each is other. It, how know? is that going? Your son and your daughter both having weddings yeah, next year, right? Yeah, first of all, it's so exciting. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's incredibly <laughs> hectic, but the best kind of hectic. Um, uh, I couldn't have chosen better children-in-law. I think all of us as parents, you know, we want to see our kids uh, grow up and, and, and become independent adults and share their life's journey with, with partners. And I'm so proud of the choices they made. And, you know, I used to always say my favorite t title is Mama, uh, but I think that's going to quickly change to Teta, which is the uh, Arabic word for, for grandma. You know, oh, we, right. no pressure, no pressure. So my goal, <laughs> oh my, my goal is to be like fun grandma. You know, uh, we have a saying in Arabic that uh, no person is dearer to us uh, than more than our children than our grandchildren. And so I'm really excited to to have babies in my life soon. Yeah. <laughs> it's so funny. You wanted them to get married. You already got them with grandkids. All right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh. I, I won't apply pressure. But I will. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, man, it is an absolute pleasure. We've uh, watched and admired you really from afar for a long time. It is so good to have you here in our studio. Enjoy the rest of your time here in New York. And really, thank you so, so much. It's an absolute pleasure. Oh. Thank you both. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.